going to show you how to make a fractal 30 bead ball. Why fractal? The word fractal um, implies duplication of identical parts, okay? And that's what we're doing here. A regular uh, 30 bead ball or dodecahedron just operates with one bead per stitch, okay? However, we could also use three beads per stitch, right? For a total of 90 beads. Uh, three beads per stitch in sterling silver. Again, 90 beads. And uh, two beads, only two beads per stitch. And this is what I'm going to show you today, okay? Now, I just want to say, before, when you go to string these uh, elements, maybe into a necklace or something, I'm sure it's going to occur to you right away that because they're so open inside, you might want to put something inside, like another bead, like this, or two or three, or four other beads, so that when people look into the middle of this structure, they don't just see the wire or thread that you're using, okay? Just an idea, you'll think of many more. So let's get started. We're gonna make this the very first step. I'm gonna put these guys over here. The very first step is to count out 60 beads. Why? Because we're using two beads per stitch instead of one. Instead of making a 30 bead ball, we're making a 60 bead ball. I graded these beads, not, you know, not to perfection, but I did take out the icky ones. How do you grade beads? If you don't know this already, if you're a beginner, welcome. All you do is to grade beads, string a bunch of beads on your needle, and then sort out the ones that, that look wonky, you know, that look too big, too fat, whatever, that are misshapen. And the more you grade your beads, the more finely you grade your beads, the, the more fine your structure will end up being, okay? I did not grade beads, any of these beads, when I made this structure. It's pretty good, but I know that it can be made better and finer. And if you're making work to sell to other people, you want it to be as fine as it can be. You want to be a professional. So step one, I put exactly 60 beads in this box. Why? Because then when I come to the last couple beads, I, I'll know I'm on my last stitch. I won't have to worry, where am I? What did I do? Whatever. Step one is string 10 beads into a ring. Um, and I knotted this ring because the bead holes are so large that you can knot in it. And the knot will not clog one of the bead holes, not likely. So string 10 beads, form a ring of 10 beads, and then go around the ring a two or three times to reinforce. If you're using beads that have really small holes, it just reinforce once or twice. Okay, so let's get started. This is, we just have to pay a little more attention when we're making this structure than when we make a regular 30 bead ball. Okay, so step one is <clears throat> go through two beads like this, okay? Now, two beads are already in place for the next ring, so that means we have to add eight beads. So let's string eight beads. Okay, we've got eight beads. Let's double check, two, four, six, eight, that's great. Now, Always try to keep your thread, always work either in a, a clockwise direction, meaning from left to right, or in a counterclockwise direction, meaning from right to left. I like, I'm right-handed, and I like working in a clockwise direction. So I always try to be sure that I've got the thread heading to the left here. That's how I keep track of where I am. Now we're going to insert the needle through the two beads we just went through. Okay, in the opposite direction. Go back through those two beads and pull. All right, and here's what we want to get in the habit of doing with this uh, structure. Check the beads. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Count them to be sure you're right. Um, just the other day, I had it one bead wrong in one of these rings. I had one bead too many, and I had just the devil of a time trying to straighten it all out. Okay, so get in the habit of counting. Now I'm reinforcing just once this ring, going back through the initial two beads. Okay, and we know that this is our fir very first ring. This is uh, row one, which has only one ring in it. So let's keep track of this. Let's always keep it on the left here, or on the right if you're, if you're uh, left-handed. Now let's insert the needle through the next two beads in ring one of row one and pull. Now, 
four beads are in place out of our 10. So we need to add six. Two, four, five, six, great. All right. So when you're not sure which bead to go through, just play this game, ask the beads. Bend the thread around and pretend that you're making a ring of 10 and ask yourself, which bead should I go through to make a ring of 10? Well, that's obviously this bead here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. This bead here. So we go through this bead and the bead next to it and the two beads next to that, to those two, okay, because they're all part of this ring. Great, let's check, two, four, six, eight, ten, great. Let's move on, let's insert the needle through the next two beads in the initial ring of ten beads and pull. Um, four beads are already in place for the next ring. This will be ring three of row two. One, two, three, four, five. So we know that we need six beads. Uh, string six beads, bend them around. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Go through this to make a ring of ten beads here. Okay, and pull. This is a really fast structure to make. It does take time to reinforce. Go through the next two beads in ring one. And pull. And add six beads. And we'll go through the only beads that allow us to create a ring of 10, which are these four. Okay. Set it down and count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Great. Okay, now we're in position to add the final ring in row two. Row two has five rings of 10 beads. Um, already, uh, six beads are in place. That's one, two, three, four, five, six for this final ring. But we are not yet in position to add the final beads, the final four beads. So to get in position, I'm going through these two beads and these two beads and pull. And now I'm in position. All right, let's add our four beads to create this last ring. Okay, four and go through the only beads that allow you to create a ring of 10. We start with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's what that looks like. And pull. Great, now what I'm gonna do, to have a, a firm foundation for adding rows three and four, I'm gonna reinforce just a little. I'm gonna go back through each ring once or maybe twice. I just want a firm foundation. I don't want this structure being floppy when I go to add the final rows. We'll do more reinforcing later. But right now we're just making the structure somewhat firmer. As far as we know, um, uh, these uh, 30 bead balls or bead dodecahedra were first invented in China um, at least 100, 100 more years ago, probably more than that. Um, there is evidence in the imperial record, um, um, in imperial hair ornaments, um, there is at least one, there's probably more that I haven't seen, that dates to the Qing dynasty, which is uh, 1644 to 1911. We can't get more of a specific date than that. But it's possible, it's entirely possible that these beaded geometric structures or bead polyhedra, as Laura Shea taught us to say, were made in other cultures too, right? Not necessarily only invented in China, could have been invented in um, separately somewhere else independently. But we just need, we need somebody to look into this um, like full time for a couple years. Uh, into the museum record and the pictorial record and etc the textual record before we can say but so far looks like the chinese invented these first all right it's really getting nice it's already getting firmer um 
If the holes in your beads are really, really tiny, I wouldn't do too much reinforcing. But you may find that it's hard to make one of these structures if you're using beads with holes that are really small. Test. You won't know until you test. All right, a little more before we start adding rows three and four. All right, so I might just snip this thread one second and add a new thread. I like uh, Fireline 4 pound test and I'm using a size 12 needle because I'm low on my size 10s. Let's count, take a moment to count, make sure each ring has 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I got it. Okay, so I'm going to add my next needle. And if you're a beginner, you've never learned how to do this, or you're still new at doing this, insert the needle anywhere. Uh, we're not making a knot right now because we don't want to clog bead holes. We're just pulling until the last inch or two uh, and working around the beads in any, any form, any pattern, until the thread is secure and it doesn't want to come out. Excuse me. Okay, it's just about secure. So we built row one separately and we built row two around it. Now we're gonna build rows three and four at the same time. What happens with this structure is, as Laura Shane noted many years ago, um, as you build row three, you build row four. Um, the only thing is at the way end, you have to connect the beads in row four, which has only one ring of 10 beads. All right, so let's go through these two beads here. Any ring, doesn't matter which ring, you go through, go through two beads on the right and then pull. Okay, we want to make a ring of 10 beads. Four are in place. One, two, three, four. That means we're going to add six. six. Yeah, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, make sure the thread is going to the left if you're working in the clockwise direction. Insert the needle through this pair of beads here and go through this pair. Okay. Looks like that and then pull. I'm going to snip this tail thread. It will, it will drive me nuts if I don't. Okay. Great. So our first ring is added. Take a moment, check the count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. It's beautiful. And now we're going to go through this pair of beads here and this pair of beads here. So this is what it looks like. Okay. This is ring two of row three. Uh, six beads are in place, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six for this next ring. So we just have to add four beads. Now we're going to go through this pair here, this pair here, and this pair here. And pull. Great. See how it's taking on this uh, spherical shape? I love it. We'll be done with this in just a minute, actually. Now, we want to go through this pair and this pair. Excuse me, not three, but two. Like that. Let me trim a little more of this thread. Okay. So... <clears throat> going through those four beads and pull. Now, six beads are already in place for this next ring. 
So we're just going to add four. You see how our beads are dwindling in the box? That tells us we're just about done here. Make sure the thread is pointing to the left. Go through this, this pair of beads here, and this pair, and this pair. Looks like that. And pull. <clears throat> okay, how many beads do we have left? Two, four, six. Only six. We're really getting down here. Go through this pair and this pair. Whoop. Like that. All right, now for this final, this is ring four of row three. I seem to have a little kink there. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so we know that six beads are in place. One, two, let me, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we just string four. One, two, three, four. Now we are going to go through the only beads that allow us to create a ring of 10, starting with this one and this one and these two and these two. Okay, so we're going through all six there. Oops, I guess that got off kilter. All right, um, and pull. Now we only have two beads left in the box. This tells us that we're on our final stitch. As we add these two beads, we finish up row three, well, well, finishing up row four, creating row four, I guess you could say. Where are these two beads gonna go? They're gonna go right here. They're connect, gonna connect this pair with this pair, okay? So let's string these two beads, final two beads. And still trying to keep working from, trying to keep working clockwise. We have our two beads on. We go through these two beads here. We're splitting this, these two pairs. And that's all we have to do. Stitch around on, to create actually two rings of 10. Just all we have to do now is connect the beads in these two rings. You see how this is actually uh, the only ring in row four. It has 10 beads. They're completely unconnected. All we have to do now is connect them. Okay, and that's it. <clears throat> we finished our uh, 60 bead ball or a fractal uh, 30 bead ball, as I call it. it it's going to take a lot of reinforcing. I'm going to say 10 minutes, 15 minutes of reinforcing before it becomes nice and firm like this and you feel like you could, you know, offer it for sale to somebody. All right, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, in the next one, in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to do this. This is the same thing. It's a dodecahedron using uh, needle bugle beads in sterling silver. Okay, same concept. Um, also a little bit of an advanced structure, kind of challenging. All right, please subscribe. See you in the next video. Thank you.